Keeping with COVID protocol, just turn to somebody you don't know and just do this. Just give me one of those. All right, and then you may be seated. I am glad that you are here. If you don't know who I am, my name is Marty. I'm one of the pastors here, and I just received some phenomenal news about 15 minutes ago. Revive is our not-for-profit 501c3 arm that we do things in the school. Uh, we've done park beautifications and stuff at uh, Dysart. Uh, community center and home repairs and painted homes and all different kinds of things. Uh, and I just received word that we received a $10,000 grant from the city, which I thought was awesome. Anytime someone's throwing around free money, that's like, that's a good thing. So uh, we're actually um, going to start planning on doing some stuff with the homeless, uh, looking at getting a... Um, Looking at getting a trailer that we can take things, uh, supplies to various locations uh, and be able to uh, serve the homeless community. So you'll be hearing a lot more about that. But fantastic news I heard this morning. I am uh, extremely excited about that and you're going to hear a lot more about it. If you are a guest with us and you snuck by the tent on your way in, do me a huge favor, fill this out and you can drop it in one of the offering buckets on your way out or you can drop it off at the tent on your way out. We got a little gift for you if you drop it off at the tent. Uh, Dutch Bros gift card, a few things like that, some music that we do here at the church. So uh, if you uh, wouldn't mind doing that, we'd appreciate it. A uh, couple things we need your help with. Uh, when you open up your bulletin, there is the right side of the page that says we want to hear from you. Um, so we are in the works of planning our 2022 Restore Groups. Now, Restore groups are a little bit different in that they focus on uh, hope, healing, and recovery, uh, and so they kind of take on a little bit different flair than our regular Bible study groups. And so what we need from you is we're asking that you would just take a moment and check one of those topics if it would interest you. We don't need your name. You're not committing to attend. We're just trying to get a feel for what the church might need, and so if you could help us with that, it would go a long way in our planning for 2022. Uh, again, we don't need your name or anything. We just need to kind of put a, a checkbox there. If you have a uh, your own suggestion, there's a mark for other. You can check that. Put it in the offering buckets on your way out. It will go a long way to help us uh, as we try to gather information and plan for 2022. Tomorrow is our big Thanksgiving food box outreach uh, that we'll be doing here at the church. We'll be giving you photos and things like that going on if you were baptized. Uh, recently, a couple weeks ago, make sure you download your photos. They're available for a limited time. 
The uh, site is in the uh, bulletin. And then make sure you're aware of Christmas services coming up and the holiday services that are coming up or the holiday hours that are coming up. Uh, so you're in the know. Christmas is always the Sunday before Christmas. That's how we do it here. And so uh, 4.30 6 and 7.30 are the service times. There is no morning service on December 19th, so just those evening service uh, will be a great time. I hope you'll come out and celebrate with us. More than that, I hope you will invite someone to be part of what we are doing here and celebrate Christmas with us, okay? Let's go ahead and pray, and then we will jump in with a big splash today. Lord, um, thank you for the great news. Thank you for um, the opportunity to serve in our community and especially to serve uh, maybe those who are a little forgotten and uh, pushed to the side and marginalized, and we look forward to uh, having a larger role to play in serving our homeless community. And so we pray that you would give us uh, creative ways to do that, uh, give us favor as we continue to move forward in this area, and uh, that we would be able to represent you well. Today, we just pray that you would speak to us, Holy Spirit, that you would enter into our space enter into to our circumstances and speak to us whatever is needed, that it would be a word specific to each person according to what is needed in the moment. I pray that you would speak hope into us, you would speak life into us. I pray that you would lead us forward. And my prayer is that as you speak to us, my prayer is that each person, that the response would be yes to you. Yes to what you're leading, yes to what you're saying, yes to what you're asking us to surrender, yes to what you're asking us to pick up. We pray that in Jesus' name, amen. Enjoy the service. Amen. Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning, you guys. I, I want to say um, my name is Daniel, and uh, I'm one of the pastors as well. It is an absolute honor uh, for me to be able to share with you guys today, and even just to be one of the leaders here, one of the pastors here at Reveal, um, such a blessing, such a blessing. Uh, we are in a brand new series, a brand new series, a series that will lead us into the Christmas season, a series that I believe will really create momentum heading into the new year. Momentum is important. Momentum breeds momentum. There's been a lot of momentum in the last couple of months um, there's a lot of really good things, a lot of really God things that are going on in our church. Amen? Amen. Amen. Um, so many times during this time of the year, our human nature is to begin to think about coasting into the new year, right? And then hitting the reset button when the clock strikes 12. 2022 is around the corner. 2022. Wow. It's around the corner. And yes, we will be saying happy new year soon enough, but I believe we serve a God who is not a God of waste. He doesn't waste experiences, good or bad. We serve a God who truly does work and can work all things together for good. Amen? Amen. For those who love him, for those who trust him, for those who desire his purposes for their life. I'll say it again. We don't serve a God of waste. He doesn't waste what happened in the past. He doesn't waste our highs. He doesn't waste our lows. He doesn't waste our struggles. He doesn't waste our strength. And we are made in his image. And if he doesn't waste, I don't believe he wants us to waste either. Starting tomorrow, we have exactly 40 days left in the year. 40 days or 40 pages left in our 2021 story that needs to be written. Do you remember what series we used to start the year? We used the series to start the year. Here it is. There it is. My, this is my story. Make it a bestseller. This is my story. Make it a bestseller. It, is your story so far this year a bestseller? Or is it one that you want to forget? Do you want to scrap it? Do you want to shelf it and just try and write a new one next year? Here's a word for you this morning, and I want you guys to lean in. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. It's not how you start. It's how you finish. It's not how you begin. It's how you finish. It's that fourth quarter mindset. What will we do in the last part of the game? Because really, games are lost, won or lost, in 
the fourth quarter. How we finish is important. Word? Word. Word. Uh, We're not going to waste the next 40 days individually or collaboratively. We're not going to just get through the holidays or survive the holidays. We're not going to waste it. We're not going to throw it in the waste basket. We're not going to coast over the next 40 days. And I hope somehow we find new motivation when the clock strikes 12 in 2022. There is momentum in our church, like I said before, like I've never seen before. And I mean that. Every baptism, there, there, it just seems like God's presence just rests on us in a stronger and stronger way. And I believe, even with the good news that Marty got this morning, the God news, good news, something's happening here at Reveal. Right? And I, I believe that. It's, it's coming. And it'll either wash over us or we'll get on top of it and experience something that will catapult us into the best. The best that we've confessed is yet to come. Pastor Marty has labeled me as what he calls a shaker and a mover. Leading into the series, I never knew really what it was, but he calls me a shaker and a mover. Leading, leading into the series or this season, we call them series, but I want you to think of this next three to four weeks as a season. This next 40 days, God has shaken me and is moving me. God has a word in this season, and, and we're going to take it one week at a time, one step at a time, one word at a time. Welcome to the final chapter of the year. Welcome to Word. Word. First, let's talk about the title of the next series for a second. So Marty gave me permission to create what he calls my cloak of mystery. I, I, I never know what's going to happen. That's just something I've learned to embrace. Um, I don't know what's going to happen until I see it. No forewarning, no, no time to ponder, no 90-day plan, just a last-minute bomb that drops in my spirit, and there you have it, surprise. I'm learning to embrace this cloak of mystery because it's the way that I've been wired. It's Daniel's fruit. It gives me full freedom to show what God's been showing me when he wants to show you guys through me. The great news is, is that you always know it's going to be hot off the stove. Okay, not a word that's been frozen, thought out, and then microwaved, but a word that's alive, a word that's fresh, a word that is completely dependent, and a word that's clear, a word that shakes, and a word that moves me. Word? Word. Word happens to be one of my favorite words. I inherited it from my East Coast family while I was in Toronto a few years back. If some of you older people want to freak out your grandchildren, your children, I'll teach you how to use it. Okay, here we go. And you can practice it with me. Over the next three to four weeks, it's the most versatile word in my arsenal. I don't have a lot of words, but here's how it works. If someone says something that gets you excited, like, I got a new job, you'd get joyful and you say, word. If, if somebody says something that stirs your soul, like, I'm going to get baptized. You'd get inspired and say, word. If someone says something that's concerning to you, something that's concerning, like my mom and dad tested positive for COVID, you'd get empathetic and say, word. Make sense? You can use it so many different ways, and that's why I love it. Let's try it. We're going to try it and have a little fun here. So Marty is the best pastor in the world. Marty is the best pastor in the country. Word. Marty is the best pastor in the state. Word. Here you go. We've got to get 100% participation on this one. Marty is the best pastor in the city of El Mirage. Word. That was louder, Marty. I don't know why in El Mirage and it wasn't as loud as the world. So um, <laughs> try this one. Jesus Christ is Lord. Word. One, one last try. God saved my life and I owe him everything. There you go. So use it freely. Instead of amens, if I say something that stirs you today, respond out loud with word. Word? All right. All right. I promise we do get in the Bible here at Reveal. I do. This is your first time here, but we just like to have a little bit of fun as well. Word? We're going to get into the word in a minute. Word? Okay. You guys are like, okay, it's too much for me now. But first, watch this epic clip from one of my favorite movies of all time. Don't judge me. Go ahead and run that clip. Come on, come on. 
company. Okay. If anybody else wants to come with me, this moment will be the moment of something real and fun and inspiring in this God forsaken business, and we will do it together. Who's coming with me? Who's coming with me? Who's coming with me? <coughs> Who's coming with me besides Flipper here? This is embarrassing. All right. Wendy, shall we? Oh, Jer, I'm, you know, I'm three months away from the pay increase. I, I... Okay. Okay. I will go with you. Dorothy Boyd, thank you. We'll see you all again. Sleep tight. Let's see what they do without us. There it is. Who's coming with me? Word. Okay, I, that wasn't meant for that, but yeah, you keep using it. Abuse it if you want. <laughs> the question, who's coming with me? Dory, Dorothy Boyd? Flipper? Anyone? I want to ask you a question. Was the outcome of this video clip more inspirational or motivational? You'd have to see the entire movie. Was it more inspirational or motivational? And that leads me right into the title of my sermon today. Here it is. Inspiration. The setup for the come up. Inspiration. The setup for the come up. This week, we're setting up the next four weeks, and I've made up my mind. I don't care about impressing you. I only want God to inspire you through me. That's all I want. See, word, I'm convinced that God has set us up as a church to come up higher, to level up in the season ahead, and I'll say that again. I'm convinced that God has set us up to come up higher, to level up, in the season ahead. There you go. Let's, let's look at it. Is there a difference between those two words? Inspiration and motivation. Well, so, well, so many leaders use the word motivate and inspire interchangeably. Yes, both are in, they're extremely important words, but there is a difference. Many leaders motivate, but the best leaders inspire. And let's talk about the difference and why it matters so much. Let's start with motivation. What's the root word of motivation? Motive. The root word of motivation is motive. Not all the time, but many times, my motivation only comes when it's about me. For me, and gives me permission to do me. Okay? It's the what that's on the other side of my action. It's external. Many times it's short-lived. And it's the exact reason why so many of us only make it 14 days into our New Year's resolutions before running out of gas, running out of motivation. Again, the root word of motivation is motive. Inspiration, though, it has a different root. The root of inspiration or inspire is in spirit. In spirit. In other words, motivation comes from some external motive or the what. Inspiration comes from within, 
and is my why. I'll say it again. Motivation comes from some external motive or the what, and inspiration, though, comes from within, and it is my why. Motivation pushes us, but inspiration pulls us. In other words, if I can make it really, really simple, the best way to inspire others is to be inspired yourself. The best way to inspire others is to bring them along with you to believe in and give their lives to the cause that you're giving your life to. See, in our video clip, Jerry's assistant, Wendy, <laughs> she, had three months, she was three months away from the pay increase. She wasn't going nowhere. No inspiration. Her motive was her. She couldn't get past herself. But Dorothy Boyd was inspired. She didn't know what she was getting herself into. She didn't know what the pay was. She didn't know what the benefit plan was or even if there were any benefits. She was inspired to move. She was pulled by Jerry's inspiration and she was willing to risk it all. Her why outweighed her what? Something on the other, something on the inside, it moved her. It pulled her into an adventure with ups and downs, highs and lows. But when the final chapter was written, what seemed to be crazy took crazy faith, <laughs> and she ended up in her promised land. Word? Word. Speaking of word, and our first word of the day, we're going to get into the word, I promise you. Like, okay, he said he's getting into the word, and then he went to Jerry Maguire, and now he's using the book of Jerry Maguire. No. Our first word of the day is found in Matthew chapter 4, verses 18 to 22. And I am not going to put it, you've got to get your word out today. We can't be in a series called Word and not have our words out. So just so you know, um, we're going to get out Matthew chapter 4. Get your Bibles out. Get, get them out from your, uh, um, your app if you don't have the Bible app. And if it's your first time here, no worries. We're going Matthew 4. Matthew 4. Verse 18, we're going to start in verse 18, okay? And so just know in the next coming weeks, if you didn't bring your word or if you didn't download that Bible app, get it done. Um, word? All right. So give you just, some more, just one more second. Now here we go. I hear pages turning still. We'll give you guys a minute. We're, going to be, we're switching levels, okay? We're going to be switching levels here. Here's our transition. We're switching from... Jerry Maguire to Jesus, the Messiah. Amen? I mean, a word. Uh, <laughs> here we go. I want you guys to meet the king of inspiration. The king of inspiration. We're going to start in, uh, we're going to start in verse 18. Here we go. The king of inspiration. The king of inspiration. There it is, the king of inspiration. Um, here we go. One day, as Jesus was walking alongside the shore of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, also called Peter and Andrew. See, now it doesn't say he saw an old high school friend. It doesn't say he saw uh, some guys that he, he knew of. It just said he saw two brothers. So it doesn't necessarily say that he knew anything of them, and it's important. He saw two brothers. Maybe they saw each other in passing before. Who knows? But this is a place where he just, he's walking along the shore. He saw two brothers. And they were throwing a net into the water, for they fished for a living. So they're at work. Two guys, he doesn't really know, um, if he knew them at all, doing their work. Jesus called out to them, come, follow me, and I will show you how to fish for people. Okay, so understand how awkward this is. Okay, under, just think about it for a second. You've got some, stra <laughs> some strange dude that just walks up out of nowhere, and he comes walking alongside, and he's like, you're working. So your mind's not in any kind of, you're not sitting, they weren't worshiping there on, on the side of the beach. They weren't, you know, they weren't ha having a, a Bible study. They're just sitting there doing what they do for a living. And here comes this guy along that they don't really know of, and he, here he comes, and, and he just tells them, <laughs> hey guys, come follow me. Where are we going? It's like that guy in the dark alley that says, hey, come back here real quick, I got something to show you. Um, it's just kind of interesting, think about, how, think about that, think about that. So 
Jesus called to them. He said, come follow me. And then the phrase that he uses, I'll teach you how to fish for people. <laughs> so just think about that for a second. Someone shows up at your work and they say, hey, listen, I'm going to show you how to fish for people. That's kind of Jerry Dahmerish. You know, I'm like, what are you, what are you, what are you, what are you, uh, what are you doing? Like, like fishing for people, it's just such a, a, a odd, an odd thing to say. Um, come follow me and I will show you how to fish for people. And then it says, and <laughs> so this is why I'm saying he's the king of inspiration. Because there had to be something. It wasn't the external cir- circumstances because the external circumstances made no sense. In the context, it made no sense. But there had to be something that was on the inside. Jesus, the inspirer, he didn't just get one Dorothy Boyd, who could have been attracted to Jerry, you find out later. But he got two dudes that were working. There was something in him that inspired. There was a spirit in him that just saying, come, follow me. They followed him. They just went. Their inspiration is so powerful. We serve a God who, who is, was inspired. He had a spirit within him, and you all have that same spirit within you. And so this is what gets me excited, is it gets me excited that Daniel can have inspiration within him because he has God's spirit inside of him. So word. So, so I want for us to see that we do serve the king of inspiration. And here we go. So because they didn't take time to think about it. They didn't have a holy huddle. Verse 20 says, and they left their nets at once. Not that they took time. They, they were confused. They had a look of confusion on their faces. He says, they left their nets at once, and they followed him. A little further up the shore, he saw two other brothers, James and John. And they were sitting in a boat. So they, didn't even, they weren't even fishing. They were just sitting in a boat with their father, Zebedee, and they were repairing their nets. Some versions say mending their nets. And he called to them to come too. <laughs> so understand, it's one thing for Jesus to influence two guys, but when, when you got your father there with you, if I had two of my kids there by my side and some strange dude comes up and says, hey, Daniel sons, come follow me. You got to know I'm going to step in, right? Words. So, so, so when you... <laughs> When you look at just the audacity and the, the spirit that was in Jesus, understand this. The de- definition of, of net mending, okay, net mending or preparing, I'm sorry, or repairing is a skill that takes a high level of expertise as well as a good dose of patience. The net has to be rebuilt so that it's the same as the original net in order for it to fish the same way. So understand these guys weren't just new fishermen that were looking for a new job. These guys were experts at what they did. And so how much harder was it for them to be with their father and then be an expert at what they're doing, and some dude comes along and says, follow me. Looking at what it was, it says, here's, here's what they did. They didn't think about it. They didn't ask, hey, say, Dad, what do you think? They didn't turn, maybe they turned to the father, and their dad's father was like, I don't know, go ahead. I, I feel it. I don't know why I feel it, but I feel it. It says they immediately followed him, leaving the boat and their father behind. They immediately followed him and leaving the boat behind. Have you been, ever been inspired so much by something that you're willing to just, you don't know why you, you feel, but you're like, you know what? I feel something pulling me in this direction. I feel something pulling me in this direction. It, it, when we experience and think back on the times that have inspired us, there is something about it that will cause us to leave everything we know and step into a new life, step into an uncertain life, step into a, what may look like a scary life, but something in me tells me, you know what? I, I, I don't, I, I, I'm uncertain of where it's going, but something in me has inspired me to have confidence that it's going to be good. And that's what I feel about the season ahead is I don't have any expectations. I don't have an agenda on God. But I'm telling you right now, God has inspired and stirred something in this shaker and mover. That I'm tell- he started in me that saying, I don't know where we're going in this last 40 days of the year. But I'm telling you right now, it's going to be good. Amen. Word. Word. 
And if you think that's impressive, watch this. We're going to go to Luke next. So Luke. So go to Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. Starting in verse 34. So Luke chapter 1. Starting in verse 34. I'm going to go all the way through verse 45. And I'm in the NLT, so the New Living Translation again. Mm -hmm. Chapter 1, so just get to Luke, and we'll start in chapter 1, verse 34. We're going to get good at this Bible switching thing. Some of you guys are like, I need to get the app because it's taking me way too long. Um, So Luke chapter 1, verse 34. Say word up if you're there. Say wait up if you need more time. All right, here we go. Here we go. Um, Here we go. So Mary asked the angel, but how can this happen? I'm a virgin. The angel replied, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby to be born will be holy, and he will be called the Son of God. We're getting a jump on Christmas here. Uh, He'll be called the Son of God. What's more, what's more is your relative Elizabeth has become become pregnant in her old age. People used to say she was barren, but she she has conceived a son and is now in her sixth month. For the word, for the word of God will never fail. Mary responded, just like Jesus' future disciples. She responded, she said, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me today come true. And then the angel left her. Inspiration, the setup for the come up. The inspiration, what inspired her, what stirred her, she said, I don't know, but I know. Here he goes again. Here goes Jesus. <laughs> Here he goes. Here's the story. This is, this is, okay, so verse 39. A few days later, Mary hurried to the hill country of Judea to the town where Zechariah lived. She entered the house and greeted Elizabeth. At the sound of Mary's greeting, Elizabeth's child leaped within her, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Have you ever been expecting and been expectant for something? That you get around somebody that's expectant, and all of a sudden, I don't know, it doesn't make complete sense, but something in me gets in you, and it causes expectancy in you to to stir an expectancy in me, and what you're expecting to give birth to is not something, and it's giving, God's given birth to me, and I don't know how it's going on, but something starts to stir, and then I want to get jumping. I want to get jumping. There's something in it when we're around people who have an expectant heart. There's something that God put in Mary. There's something that God put in Mary that when she came into Elizabeth's presence, it leaped within her. And it says, Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Jesus in the womb. (laughs) Jesus in the womb. This This is the greatest filling of the Holy Spirit of all time. From one belly to another. Um... (laughs) <laughs> Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Elizabeth gave a glad cry and explained to Mary, God has blessed you above all women, and your child is blessed. Why am I so honored that the mother of my Lord should visit me? So, so she starts, Elizabeth starts understanding everything. She starts understanding everything. She starts getting it. There's something about when the Spirit starts to move us where life just starts to make a little more sense. Sometimes when we, we, we come in and, and in our times when we think about when life was the most clear, it's when we were the most full. Things start to make sense one step at a time. Verse 44 says, when I heard your greeting, the baby in my womb jumped for joy. You are blessed because you believe that the Lord would do what he said. You believe that the Lord would do what he said. When I look at Jesus, Jesus is the king of inspiration. When you understand the difference between motivation and inspiration, they just don't compare. Nothing against motivation, but something about when God begins to inspire, things that his spirit can do that we just can't do. 
I could write 5,400 words for you this morning, but, but word, but, but my heart is, is that if God would just put something in me and inspire something in me, that what's in me could get in you, and then what's in me and you could start to, to, could start to transfer to somebody else, and that we could become a more and more inspired church in this last season of the year. Amen? That, that we can help others who maybe their story hasn't been the best over the first 10 months, but these last two months, these last 40 days, that we can walk alongside of them and say, listen, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. Let's finish together. And I don't know why I want to even help you because I don't even really know you, but I want to help you. You're you're a stranger walking along the beach, but I want to help you. That's the power of being inspired. That's the power of his spirit within us. Word. Word. And let me make it personal. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Word. Word. And I told some of you this. There's something about what happened in our young adult community last year. About this time. Around this time last year, the Spirit of God inspired a movement. And here was the root of the movement. Here was the root of the movement. You don't have to turn here. Revelation 12, 10 to 11. You don't have to just listen. Then I heard a voice in heaven say, Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Messiah. For the accuser of our brothers and sisters who accuses them before our God day and night has been hurled down. The accuser that has been accusing, that had been accusing this younger generation that I I, I spent a lot of time with, day and night, that they're not good enough, that they're they're never going to be anybody, that they're going to fail their parents, that, that, that they, everything that he has put in them and on them has been hurled down. They triumphed over him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. I'll read it again. They triumphed over him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. Word? So here's what happened last year. Is, and I think this, it was such a good, it was, it was such a good um, testament to what happened when we saw, when we did the, around the tables, when everybody was here. It was, it was kind of awkward, but people got to know other people, and there was something powerful that happened in that. We're going to be doing that again here in the future. But, um, I wanted to give the young people an opportunity to speak. And so the lie that so many people believe, and you guys can all relate to this. You guys can all relate to this. We're not switching there yet. Um, the lie that we started to, to, to believe, the lie that they believed, was that if I tell people who I really am, they won't love me the same. If people know who I really am, and what I really go through, and where I really been, they won't love me the same. And that's kind of been, I think it's been like a muzzle that the enemy's convinced us of to, to keep those things to yourself. We don't want to hear your struggles, we just want to hear your successes. And what these young people began to do was we created an atmosphere of transparency. And they began to share, and they began to express who they really were, where they came from, and, and it did the exact opposite. It did the exact opposite. It didn't make their friends, it didn't make many of you love them less, it made you love them more. And I have never been a part in all the years that I've, in any of the years that I've done ministry, I've never been a part of seeing the freedom that came. And it wasn't from the one that just spoke of the word of their testimony, but it was the one also that received that. It, it was like one would speak it and chains would kind of be removed. A freedom came with that. But somebody else that was sitting that thought they were the only one in the room, and now hold on, you go through that too? There was something that began to transpire in that setting that just started to catapult us into the new year. And we thought it was going to be a three to four week series, and it ended up being a couple of months. And so when I look back to the things that happened, when I look back 
that there was something, there was a spirit that began to get into these young people, and as they, they walked in that freedom, as they confessed in the power of, of just confessing and professing that this is where I was, and I'm still going through some of this, but, but this is where I'm at, and, and then you start to see people love you more, and what does the word say? The word says that, that they will know us by the way that we love one another. So where we thought the love was going to de decrease, the love actually increased. And so then people start to walk in. They're like, I don't know what's different about this place, but they just seem to love each other. Why do they love each other? Because they know each other. Word? Word. And so here we are. Um, that's just a glimpse of what happened. A uh, uh, Holy Spirit infused um, time. An inspirational time. And I, I want to, today my heart was just to set up where we're going here for this last 40 days. I want to take us back. I want to take us back to just one of the many stories from last year. And it will be proof that when the spirit in one person inspires another, something just starts to happen. Go ahead and run that video. So my speech problem is always it's it's um it's always been a struggle for me because uh because I for a minute I didn't know how to speak and so I didn't use like like I like sign language like like th this was more for example and um and so at a certain time my older brother Israel he was a translator for me and so I had to tell him what I wanted and then he would go ask my parents and so, and so, when, when, so when I get tongue-tied, I feel embarrassed and I feel stressed out, and so I felt embarrassed, I guess, because I always, because I always felt like I was a kid, like, oh yeah, oh yeah, this kid has a speech problem. <sighs> so, so my early childhood, it was kind of like in the middle of my parents' um, rough part, of, rough part of their marriage. Um, early on, um, I uh, had a babysitter who really didn't like me a whole lot. She probably didn't like me just because I maybe maybe was maybe was a bit more difficult than maybe Israel was probably, and and I felt like she just wasn't. I felt like she was very impatient with me, and um, yeah, um, and so that, that was a bit rough, but. Um, so when, when my parents weren't around, I always stayed very close to my older brother Israel, who him and I really, like, who him and I really bonded and connected through gaming, you know? And, um, and so one of the, and so one of the, uh, the, uh, first games I really discovered that I loved a lot was NFL 2K5 because my dad and his, and his uh, friends would, would play it. So I used to play imaginary football and basketball around the house. You know, I always pretend I was a certain team and play by myself, you know. I uh, did basketball for a club team, but they always, but I always got benched. I, I at least played at least one minute per game. And it was kind of like, it's kind of like hurtful, harmful. And then in seventh and eighth grade, I tried out for both football and basketball. I just didn't make the cut for whatever reason, because there were players better than me. So, so when I was um, when I was actually promoting from eighth grade into high school, because I thought you know I was ready for a regular high school, you know, and I thought I could you know go on without the IEP. And um, I, I started off my freshman year at uh, Valley Vista, and I remember. Being, being just sitting in a library one night, one day, like it, like, it was just too much for me. I started crying, and I remember just texting my mom, like, Mom, I'm done, like, I, 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 need, I need to get out of here. I can't do this anymore. 
So, when I started track, my dad, um, um, he was coaching a couple of, a, a, a couple of fighters at the time too, and so, um, so he would, you know, you know, like to drive me to practices and my meets and stuff. And I think it was really good for both of us because before then, I think him and I were very like very distant and stuff, and so. And he would, and he would, and uh, he would, he would always be at every meet, coaching me from the side. And so it was just, it, it, it just made me feel very secure knowing my father was on my side, at my, my corner, coaching me up. He always got very excited anytime I sprinted all out and I caught a few people from behind. I knew my dad always was right there waiting for me, just, uh, just say, hey, good job, son, I'm proud of you. It was just, a, just such a great feeling knowing that um, he was right there, and I knew he always was always proud of me because he always knew I I I, uh, I uh, always gave my all on the track, and he knew I always left it on, out there. Thankfully, my luck you know started changing, um, and in in 2016, my teacher, who's in charge of my credits and stuff, put me in his classroom to do online school. He helped me not only catch up, but I was ahead of schedule heading into my senior year of August. So the start of my senior year, he's like, Isaiah, I want you, I want to get you out of here by December. I graduated from high school um, half, uh, half a year early. So when I, when I first got my Bible, um, I was extremely excited just because I'm like, oh my gosh, this is, this is my own Bible. It's thin. Um, has my name on it and so it was just it was very exciting you know and I remember the very first chapter or the very first book I actually will write I dove right into was Romans just because I thought it was a good book to stride in you know um made my made just just really made my relationship with God take off the most because I was learning stuff about him that I never knew before I found such a peace with God's God's will for me and his plans for me because of his scripture and his word, like Jeremiah 29, 11, where he has good things for me that aren't good or that aren't bad, but are helpful and will be prosperous. I just trust him in his will, and I always want his will to be done. God is, in, God is in control of my future, my plans and stuff, and I really don't have nothing to worry about. Yeah, so um, I so after you know, high school, I went into, um, I uh, started volunteering at the church immediately after just because I thought, you know, it, it, was, it was it was just such a good place to really start investing my time into. And plus, it's a church, you know, and so it's like, it really maybe it helped me, you know, connect more to to uh, people. And I think it made me realize I'm a servant at heart. Where else is, there's nothing greater investing in than the church, you know? And I think that's where I found my peace the most. And I think that's where that... I build my foundation. My name is Isaiah Arianus, and this is my savior story. So, for those of you guys who don't know, um, sorry, that's my son. And, uh, um, It's a testament, and there were so many other stories, but I believe that he, he's one of the most humble guys that I know, and I believe that God, he does lift up the humble, and to see a young man who had no, not only inspiration, but he had no identity. Everything he tried out for, he'd get cut. Uh, somebody was so passionate about sports, they couldn't make a team. And sometimes you feel you're so a failure and then you jump into other places and circles and you think if they know that I'm a failure, that then they won't love me. And, and now I guarantee you that what you're experiencing now is a greater love for that young man. And I'm telling you that one, and that's just one of many stories that we're told. We're going to enter into a season starting, um, coming up on December 1st. So right after the holidays on Wednesday night. We're going to enter into a season of telling stories of our Savior. 
I think there's no better way for us to stay focused. There's no better way for us to have that deep appreciation and be inspired to make the most of a season that tries to take the most from us than by hearing the inspirational stories of young people. And I've seen the inspiration happen from from one person to another. Um, I've seen the inspiration take place, and I see a movement that's taking place within our young adults. I see it, and it's an inlet. It's doing something to our church. And so I want to invite you guys. Um, We are entering into Save Your Stories. Um, It's Save Your Stories Reloaded, maybe we'd call it, but uh, the war for my soul. Like I said, starting Wednesday, December 1st, I'm inviting you guys to be inspired. Last year, we had about 30 to 40 young adults, and, and, and what started out as a three to four weeks turned into almost two months. Like I said, heading into the birth of our Savior this year, I believe that the best way to stay focused and make the most of the last 40 days of the year, we're going to open the gates of inspiration. Word? Word. By the power of the blood and the word of their testimony. So here's what we're going to do this year to spread the inspiration. We're going to be spread we're going to be streaming online on Facebook Live and we're opening the doors to as many of you as possible can come and hear their stories live. Okay, so I I know and Marty's probably thinking like right now we don't have enough seats. And, and so we're, we're between online I want to open the doors for you guys to come live and hear their stories live. Um, We may do a few videos, stories as well, but uh, I want you to be able to come, and we'll have probably four stories each night. Um, I want to invite you guys to be able to come and and just experience that that something in them would inspire you, and that we would spend the last part of the season just having clarity. Amen? Amen. So um, there is just something different about when Mary showed up live. (laughs) in Elizabeth's presence, and we'll fit as many seats as we can in here. Um, If you can't make it, though, like I said, we'll see you online, live, uh, encouraging these young people as you hear the word of their testimony. Word? Word. Stand with me as we close. Um, We're going to close it out today as the band comes up. um, As the band comes up, and uh, young adults, you guys can feel free. This can be a new banger is what we call it. Um, You've heard it before. But we are going to head out of here tonight, or out of here today, just being inspired, just being inspired. And so I want you to hear these words to the final song. These are going to be your anthem, so don't be shy. And it's not just young people. Anybody who wants to join them, just if you're a little bit older, they may, if they step on you, no problem. Just, just be careful. Be careful. We don't want to hurt anybody. But um, it, it, we want inspiration, not injuries. If you were ever buried beneath shame, hear me. If you're ever buried beneath shame, shame so heavy You couldn't carry the weight. You felt dead inside. You were breathing, but not alive. And then one day, one of my favorite phrases in scriptures, and then one day he called your name and you ran out of the grave. Today today may be your day. This is your song. This is your celebration. I too ran out of the grave, out of my darkness. Leave it all here today. Let the inspiration of the spirit come. I was buried beneath my shame Who could carry that kind of weight It was my turn Save it Till I met you I was breathing but not Alive. All my failures I try to hide. It was my turn till I met you. Say this. You call my name and I ran out of that grave. Out of into your glorious day. You call my name and I ran out of that grave. Out of the darkness into your glorious day. Yeah! Praise you. Say this. Now your mercy has saved my soul.
soul. Declare this. Now your freedom is all that I know. The old man you Jesus, when I met you, yeah, you called my name, and I ran out of that grave, out of the darkness into your glorious day. I need to rescue, my sin was heavy, but change break at the weight of your glory. I need a shelter, I was an orphan, now you call me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healing, now you love time that we rejoice for our Savior. Lord, help us to, to be inspired to continue to, to let this freedom reign all the way over the next 40 days. God, I thank you for what you're doing in our church family. God, I thank you for what you're doing in the mending of generations. I thank you for everything that you're doing here today. Um, God, we love you. We, we love you. We love you because you chose us. You chose us. And, and God, we thank you this morning. Lord, I pray that your spirit would inspire us to get us to pull us into places that maybe we wanted to get into that we weren't able to, that you would pull us into those places. And over the next 40 days, over these next 40 days, God, that it would be the greatest 40 days of the year, that we would write the rest of the chapters of this year so that we can celebrate going into the new year with great anticipation and expectation, God being expectant that our best individually and collaboratively as a church family is truly yet to come. In Jesus' name we pray, and all God's people said, amen. You guys hug somebody on the way out. We love you. We'll see you next week.